Look how awesome this is. I almost just want to make an animation of this rope slithering around like a snake. I'm a little bit sick, but hopefully my voice doesn't sound too weird. And without me wasting any more time, these are going to be five different ways to make pipes, cables and ropes. So, let's get into it. Number one, this is probably the simplest way to make a pipe. Is just by hitting Shift A, adding a cylinder, rotating on the Y axis 90 degrees, duplicating it, scaling it down, scale it across, and then hitting Control Shift B once you've selected both, and then just hit Difference. Easy way to make a pipe really simple it lacks a lot of control doesn't work well with curved edges but if you're making something simple like a copper pipe or maybe a gun barrel this is probably your best method if Control shift b did not work for you it means you need to enable pull tool so if you go to edit preferences go to the add-ons tabs and then just search pull tool as soon as you add on that the Control shift b shortcut will work for you The next way to make a pipe or a cable is by hitting Shift A, grabbing a cube, going into edit mode, hitting M to merge vertices at center. Another way to do that is just right click, go all the way down, merge vertices, and then merge at center. Now we have a single vertice. We can extrude this by just hitting E, and I'm going to make a curvy pipe. something like that. Already this has a lot more control for making strings because you can make more complex shapes. It's way easier to work with than working with the cylinder. But I don't want 90 degree edges so I'm going to select all by hitting A and I'm going to hit Control B and B. That's going to bevel vertices. You can use your mouse wheel to increase the amount of bevels or take them away. That's fine for me. Now we have a nice curvy bit of string but it has no depth so going to say convert to curve. Once you've converted any object to a curve, you're going to get another display or panels property down here in the right. There's a bunch of settings here, but the main one we need to use is just go all the way down to the bevel tab, find where it says depth, and then let's increase this to six, maybe seven. Now we have a nice thick piece of rope. It's a bit square, so just going to hit shade to smooth. And now it's pretty good. It still has quite a lot of bumps, so to increase that resolution, I'm just going to go to the modifiers, add a modifier, add subsurface division, and then maybe set it to 2. Now we have a super curvy piece of pipe or string, and we have tons of control over it. This third way to make rope is my favorite, it's super easy to do, and the outcome is really awesome. So let's start by adding a circle, go to mesh. Add circle. I'm going to change it down to 10 vertices as that's going to work really well for this. Let's scale it all the way down. We don't need a giant rope. And then hit the full stop. Now hit Ctrl A to make sure apply that transformation. And then there we go. Next thing to do is go to empty and add an empty plane of axis. Hit R to rotate it and then Z and then 90 degrees. So rotating at 90 degrees on the Z axis. Select the circle again, and let's add a modifier. We're going to add the array modifier. We're going to change from relative offset to constant offset. I mean, object offset. Sorry about that. Then we're going to use the eyedropper tool, and we're going to select the empty. Next, we're going to want to grab our circle and move it along the y-axis. Normally, both of your circles should move at the same time, but if they're not, like mine are, you're just going to want to hit Control A and apply transformations. We're going to want to try and move these circles so they're almost touching but not quite. Let's move it in a little bit, hit Control A and apply transformations. That's probably a bit too close, a little bit out and apply. Once you've got them right, we're going to increase our count to four. These are going to be how many segments our rope has. If you want more segments, you're going to want to change the degrees. So because we use 90 degrees, 90 goes into 360 degrees four times so we're going to have four segments 
If you wanted six segments, you're gonna to have to use 60 degrees because 60 degrees goes into 360 six times. But enough maths, let's get on with it. Next thing we're gonna to need to do is add a screw modifier. So go, add a screw modifier, and then just change the height. I'm gonna change it to 50, and that looks good. You're gonna really wanna play around with this to the exact kind of rope you wanna make. Next, we're gonna now need a path for our rope to follow. So hit shift A, and let's find a curve. I'm gonna use the path. I prefer to the Bezier curve, but really you can use any curve, it's gonna work. So once you've added a path, select your rope again, and we're gonna now add our last modifier, which is the curve modifier. Use the eyedropper tool, and then select the path you've just added. Now your rope should be following the curve, but it's following it in the wrong direction. So I'm going to change the deform axis to Z. Now we have a rope, it's following our path, but it's way too short. And now we can control the length within the screw modifier and just by increasing the iterations. There we go, 10 iterations. Now let's select the rope and then the curve and the empty and hit control P and parent object. Now, when you move the rope, your empty and your path are going to follow. To get to it will interact with the path, open the little circle tab and here you'll find your empty and your path. Once you select your path, go into edit mode, grab a vertice, and now whenever you move that vertice, rope is going to follow the vertice. Super satisfying, super easy to use. You can really just bend this into any way possible. The next step, or the next way to make string, is also really simple. We're just going to add a curve. Let's use a Bezier curve. I'm going to grab this vertice, move it up a bit. And let's maybe extrude it with E. And there we go. Got quite an interesting piece of string shape there. Let's just go into the curve properties and add some depth to it. That's looking quite good, super simple but we can now use this to make a different type, or I guess the fifth type to make ropes or cables. We're gonna go, we're gonna convert it. I'm gonna hit convert to mesh. Once it's a mesh, we're gonna wanna select one of the loop cuts. To do that, we're gonna hit Alt and then left click. And we select a whole loop cut. Next, you're gonna select P and say separate by selection. And we're just gonna wanna do this with every single one. So Alt, P, separate by selection, Alt, P, separate selection, you get it. I'm not going to do all of them, but you easily could do all of them. There's no limit to how to do this. Once you've selected all the ones you want, delete the rest you're not going to use, and then select all, hit Control J to join them, and then right click, convert to curve. Now, we have multiple curves following the exact same path and we can increase their depth by just selecting it up here. Let's maybe shade them to smooth. Now we have tons of cables following the exact same path. This is super useful for things like ribbon cables, HDMI cables, tons of like tech with mechs or even server rooms. Super useful technique. They're a bit jittery so we can just add another modifier. Let's say subsurface modifier and there we go let's maybe make it two perfectly straight or perfectly curvy cables really easy to use and you can still edit them each individually let's just go into edit mode and move it there there Tons of control over this. You can also extend them individually. So they all follow the same place, but you still have the freedom to adjust each one's to your own specific needs. Those are the five ways I normally use whenever I'm making ropes, strings, or pipes in my project. I was quite a bit sick, so sorry that you had to listen to that blocked nose voice of mine. Hopefully next week's video, I'll have a clearer voice and the quality of the videos will be a bit better. But as always, thanks for watching. And if you want any other videos, just leave a comment down below and I'll see if I can make a tutorial on that. Thanks for watching.